Well, I guess this is as good a place as any. Get me the tire bucket, son. Well, Paul, why are we going to grease it now when we're almost home? You remember that far back, son? Yes, sir. Well, then that's why. Because we want to come home decent and respectable. Yes, sir. that Davy and me played hooky and went fishing? <laughs> it was a good day for you, wasn't it? Yeah, it was always good when Davy was around. He'll be there to meet us, won't you, Pa? But don't count on him, son. Well, why not? He's still home, isn't he? Well, he'll be there to meet us. Give me the tar bucket. You got the jack. So I can prop up the axle while I pull the wheel. Well, go on. You won't be here long enough to pull that wheel. Charlie Pete. Well, I never figured you'd get up enough nerve to show your face around here, guest. That doesn't give you any grounds to try to order me off my own property. It ain't your land any longer. It was confiscated Tory land, and I bought it from the government. My son. Why didn't Davy? Davy? He passed his chance. I reckon he didn't want to be reminded his father was a traitor. I don't like that word. Well, I don't either, Guest. So you just tighten up that lug nut and get out of here. Because if I catch you around here again, I'm going to shoot you for trespassing. <laughs> I think. Yes, Becky. And I'll need some needles. I surely do hope you have a sugar loaf. Dan's mighty tired of that long sweetening. Yes, Becky. Ain't you finished buying stuff yet, Mom? Uh, Israel, uh, I think I've got something here that'll uh, help pass the time a little quicker. Especially when you eat it out of doors. Good morning, Israel. Hi, Tercius. Want one? One thing's certain. He's not a pig. Sam. We got things to do. What things? We gotta see David Guest. What for? Paul just came back. John Gist is home? Yes, ma'am. I just run him and his son off my land. I reckon they figured Davy was still there. Davy ain't seen them yet? Nope. Becky, I got a feeling there's gonna be trouble. John used to be our friend before he left. Yeah, that's just the way I figured. John used to be a friend. Hey! 
Wait. It's Israel Boone. Gotcha. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Giz. Hello, Israel. Hey, come on. Yeah. Come to tell you about him. He's come back to spoil everything for you, like as not. Thought you said when he left he was gone for good. Welcome home, child. Becky, thanks. Welcome home. Cincinnati, you remember John? Huh? John Gist. Oh, well, sure I do. Uh, it's been a long time. Uh, John, you thinking of staying? That's my intention. Davy. Hey, it's Davy. He is here. Why did you have to come back? I'd almost lived down the shame. Davy. That's our pa you're talking to. Hal, I thought you were... Go back to Canada. There's no place here for traitors. No traitors or their Tory friends. I'd expected some distrust, but... But this... Find the boys, will you, John? I have to pick up some things in the store. Then you can take us home. Talk to John Gist. Not yet. He was watering his horses. But I don't mind telling you, I was a mite surprised to see him. Do you approve? Approve of what? Of my bringing John and Hal here. I'm not sure. Maybe Paul will take us next time he walks traps. You know how he always favored you. So did Davy once. Becky. Dan, if you'd seen the welcome they got at the fort, you'd have brought them here too. Well, at least I'm satisfied you did. Dan, about John. I know what you're going to say. Now, don't worry. Oh, John. Hey, let me take that. Thank you. Becky? John. Dan, thank you for having us. Well, Becky's the one you'll want to be thanking, but... Be welcome. But you just as soon I hadn't come back. Well, for your own sake, John, and to put it bluntly, I just as soon you'd stayed in Canada. Well, come on in, Hal. Close the door, will you, Israel? Yes, sir. Good night, boys. 
Come on, Hal. Up the ladder, Hal. Oh, remember? You've stayed here lots of times. Uh-huh. Boy, it's gonna be all right up there. Yes, sir. John, can we go outside to talk? If you'll excuse me, Becky. Of course, John. I mean it the way it sounded, Al. You know him. I know Davy, too. He used to favor me, but he despised us when he saw us. He hated Pa. What are you going to do now, John? Your homestead's been sold as confiscated Tory land. Well, there's lots of other land and lots of logs. Well, you've sure chosen yourself a hard road to hope. We both know that. Dan, uh, I need you at least to understand why I chose it. You know what I'll never understand is what changed you. I didn't change. From Patriot to Tory? No. When the British were hunting the Virginia Burgesses to stand trial for their lives, didn't you risk your own neck to hide and protect them? Well, of course I did. And when the Redcoats finally fired on us, weren't you and Davy among the first to join the militia? And at Williamsburg, I saw you take a ball in the shoulder and come back in battle. Your credit. You did a good job of bandaging. And just when we needed you the most, you up and joined the British. After the Declaration of Independence. That's when we needed you. That's when my conscience wouldn't let me fight with you. Well, your conscience let you fight against us, though, with red coat lead still in your shoulder. Dan, when the Crown oppressed us, we fought for justice, side by side. I would have died for it. I know that. But the Declaration turned that fight into a revolution, Dan, to overthrow our government. For liberty. I had liberty under British law for almost as long as I had lived. So did my father before me. I expected to find it again in Canada. Did you? Yes, I did. Well, why did you come back here? Because this is my country. And because my son was here. It took me a long time to understand what love of country means to me. To love and cherish your homeland. Not the men who happen to be running it. In other words, you're still loyal to the Crown. I didn't say that. Look, Dan. You and I grew up here to shoot fireworks and shout hurrah on George III's birthday. When I left, we were governed by the Continental Congress. Now it's the Articles of Confederation. And there's strong talk of a republic and an elected president. But the country, king, articles, or president, the land remains as dear to a man as his own mother, as much a part of him as his own sons, even when his son and his country want no more to do with him. Well, I'm not going to argue with you about that, John. But there's another thing you've got to think about. You aren't the only one that's going to have a hard road to hoe coming home. Al? I know. Are you willing to see him go through it? Man or boy, your country is worth fighting for. You have your choice of beds, the hearth or the haymow. Nothing sleeps sweeter than fresh hay. Oh, here are your quotes. I'm ready for them. This has been a long, long day. Good night. Good night, John. Good night, John. Fanny? 
You know, Becky, my father used to like to tell about a tribe that believed that when a man could learn no more, it was time for him to leave this earth. Well, one old fellow decided he could learn no more, and he sat down to smoke one last pipe full with his friends. And the boy, whose job it was to light the pipe, rubbed his fingers in the mud before he reached for the coals. And when asked why, he said, because the mud keeps the coal from burning me. And the old man got up, took off his shroud, and said, fellow tribesmen, no man is ever too old to learn, even from a little boy. <laughs> You know, Becky, Ezra remembered that Hal Guest was his friend first and left the questions to come as they will. I intend to remember that. I hope the people of this town remember that. Breakfast? No, I wasn't hungry, thanks. Hal! Hal! What's all the excitement this early in the morning? Hal's gone! I guess I worry too much. Well, let you and I go in and have some breakfast. Hal said he wasn't hungry. Yo! Get in there! Go! You better get in there. Let's eat. Is the mom going to eat breakfast with us? She's not here right now. Miss Gordon took sick yesterday. She went over to take her some bread. She'll be back after a while. Who cooked breakfast then? I did, and if you have any remarks to make, just don't make them. Looking's pretty good, Pa. Or shouldn't I have said that? You got a remark I'll accept. Pa, what do you suppose made Hal run off like that, all by himself? Sometimes when a person has a problem they're trying to solve, they like to be all alone. Did you figure out how to find him, Pa? Maybe he needs somebody to help him think. Well, maybe he has too many people trying to help him now. You mean like Davy? Davy for one. Well, the way I see it, it's Davy's fault anyway. He wasn't so stubborn. Well, the trouble is that it's not just Davy. There are a lot of people around here that feel that Hal's Pa has a heap of explaining to do. And I think the folks would hear him out if it wasn't for Charlie Pete egging him on. Israel, sometimes you make a lot of sense. Not always, but sometimes. Pa, huh? do you think you can make him change? Make who change? Charlie Pete. And Davy and everyone else could figure it out all by themselves. Well, can't always make folks change or even listen. What's going to happen then? I don't know. You know what I'm going to do right now, Pa? Yep. 
Right now, you're going to finish your breakfast. What can I do for you? Well, you can quit pumping that thing so we can have a quiet little talk. No reason why I can't continue working while we talk. Well, none of you pay close attention to this now. <laughs> Charlie, if you got something to say, say it. Yeah, it's about your paw. What about him? You figure he plans on staying in this territory? How should I know? I haven't talked to him. Well, that's just what I come to speak to you about. You know, Dave, you've got a lot to live down. I know that. Well, you've got to realize what I'm telling you is for your own good. You haven't told me anything yet. We had a little meeting last night. What kind of meeting? Just some of the folks that feel the same as I do about Tory traitors crawling back home and thinking they're as good as other people. What's that got to do with me? Just this. You tell your father to get out, and you tell him real plain, so he doesn't misunderstand. You, you want me to run my own father and my own brother out of town? It's your duty, Davy. Otherwise, the folks won't know what side you're on. I got a bum leg to prove which side I'm on! As far as my brother and my father in the war are concerned, you don't have to tell me my duty. I reckon that means you're, you're with us, sir. Uh. Al, come back! You catch him stupid again, you ought to tan him good. That was my brother. We were always real close. He was coming to be with me. On our side. There's some way I can help? Go away. There's nothing anyone can do to help. Just go on away. I ain't going any place until you turn around and tell me what's wrong. If you feel that bad, why don't you cry? Pa says it's no disgrace. He says it does a body good. I guess you've been talking to Davy. No, I meant to, though, but that old Charlie Pete got there first, and he and Davy talked. What were they talking about? Well, Charlie Pete done most of it, but he talked like like he blamed Davy for something that Pa had done. That's what the preacher must have meant last time he came out. What did he say? He said something about the sins of the father coming to visit with his sons. What does that mean? I ain't sure. Unless it means sometimes grown-ups do something to make it hard for us kids. You know something, Israel? You're real smart. Paul don't think so sometimes. And you're a real good friend, too. Well, you know I feel a whole lot better now that you and me have had a talk. You mean that? Cross my heart. Well, if you feel that much better, why don't you and me go fishing? Come on. One, two. I don't like it, Daniel. How long has he been here? Not even a week yet, and already this trouble brewing? I tell you, if John Gist stays, there's going to be big trouble before we get through. What makes you say that? Well, Charlie Pete was in again last night, along with some of the others. 
Now, he's getting folks all steamed up. Charlie talks too much. Oh. Well, he, uh... Had a lot of folks that was listening to him. Well, there's going to be big trouble, because John Gist is staying. Are you sure of that? Moving into the old Watkins cabin. Well, couldn't you talk him out of it? I didn't even try. A man's got a right to live where he chooses. Daniel, it sounded like you were sticking up for him. Cincinnati, who's to say he was wrong? You and I stood up for our beliefs. So did he. I reckon that's his privilege, too. Yeah, well, I wish he'd choose someplace else to do it. Dan? Sean? Cincinnati? Howdy. How's the cabin? Oh, lots more work to do. Hal's out there now. All by himself? Well, people haven't been exactly friendly. I don't think they'd bother a small boy. Well, now, what can I do for you? Brooke Max. Got to invest in a new one. Well, could Davy fix it? Uh, John, um, I've got some good ones standing right there in the keg. How much? A dollar and a half. A dollar and a half? Well, everything is dear these days. That's top-notch Pennsylvania steel. John, I'll take any Owen for uh, two bits. Yeah, you can get it fixed. And I'll put it on your account, John. Thank you. John. Oh, folks will change in time. Not unless you help. How? Oh. I can't hold him at gun's point. It wouldn't do no good if he could. Guns ain't gonna settle this. You gotta talk to people, explain why you come back. Charlie Peter, no Charlie Pete. Most of them are so scared of Charlie. They won't listen when I say hello. Even my own son. Then you're gonna have to make them. Gain their respect. And that'll be the end of Charlie Pete. Well, I hope I live that long. I hope so too, John, for all our sakes. Because if folks don't get cured of this being afraid, everything we've fought for in this country is just gonna fade away like summer snow. Well, thanks anyway. So long. Just take your hands off of me. If I catch that wolf of yours spying on me just once more, I'm gonna teach him a lesson he'll never forget. He didn't spy on you. You heard what I said. Charlie, if you ever so much as touch that boy, I'll hang your hide up to dry. I don't take words like that off your kind. You'll take them from me. Are you choosing me, traitor? That's enough. You had your sport, leave him alone. And get out of here. Are you all right? I'm still alive. Looks like you've been working very hard. Me and Paul. Listen, Hal, about what happened at the shop. Uh, it was a mistake. I knew why you came. I should have known, Davy. Now, look, he, he can go back to Canada, where he belongs. To Canada? Oh, you know Paul. He feels he belongs here. He's got to go, Hal, or else... Or else you and your friend Charlie Pete will run him out or... 
Or shoot him. Can't you see? That's just what we don't want. He's... He's a traitor, Hal. Well, at least he did it on his own. He didn't have no Charlie Pete telling him what to do. Or Paul... Yo, if you want him! Get off our property. I'm taking you along with me. Now look, you, you and I'll live together, we'll... I'll take good care of you. We'll have fun like we used to. Come on. All right, have it your own way. Another axe. That's good. Anything you want to tell me, son? Paul, why do we stay here? Because this is our country, son. Paul, can't you see it don't want us? Don't forget, we have friends here, as well as enemies. We can go back to Canada. Man can't keep running from himself, Hal. He's got to make a stand for what he thinks is right. No matter if somebody else gets hurt. No matter. Now I got sins from you and Davy both that's come to visit with me. It just don't seem fair. Get up. It might be tainted. Mmm. <laughs> Good and sweet. <laughs> At least you won't have to watch your face now. <laughs> well, now the well's done. Let's see if Becky's ready for first fire. Yeah, hey, let's well. light her up. Time to light first fire. I heard. I've already kindled it. Watkins knew how to build a chimney. She's coming! Well, at least she started anyway. I don't like that. Well, you know, you gotta wait for the hot air to start to rise before you get a draft. You know that, John. First smoke off of our new hearth. She draws like a house of fire. 
I've got a bottle under all that stuff in the wagon, if celebrating's not against your principles. It never has been, John. <laughs> John, everything in its own time. You men. You know, the sun is already in the west, and if you want to sleep in your own house tonight... Oh, and I almost forgot. Israel, will you get that little surprise out of the rig for me? A little housewarming remembrance from our family to yours. Thanks, Peggy. Thanks very much. You're pretty. I remember when Ma was alive. And... I'll take him, dear. I'm going to go inside and finish anyway. Come on, Hal. You're slowing down. Well, that's the first step, John. Hal's got his own home again. Now, now if only Davy. Well, just give him a little time. Are you two grown men going to stand there and let the children do your work? And we're ready for the furniture. You just heard the general speak. And when she speaks, you move. Yes, ma'am. Where do you want me to put these? John, I'll come back tomorrow and help you get your things arranged. Well, is there anything else you want me to bring in, Paul? Well, I guess that's about it for now. Uh, except for that bottle uh, under the front seat. I've been saving it for a long time, Dan. Against the time we'd have a home again. Well, then you can save it for a day or two longer until we get you moved in properly. And it's getting late, and I have things to do at home. I'll save it then. Uh, there's a pot of stew on the fire, and I've already made up the beds. Gonna say goodbye? I won't even try to, thank you. Well, there's no need to. You never know. Someday we may need some help. You just yell and we'll be there. Bye, Hal. The stew. It's burning. Come on, Hal. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. No matter how much we've done, it's still a lonesome house. Hey, Ma. Why don't we give him a housewarming? You know, Israel, sometimes you come up with a real good idea. Dan, do you think people would come? If Pa asked them to a party, they would. The point I'm making is, we whipped them lobster backs once. Yeah, we should run them out. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do we want them back or not? No! They all say that, except she ain't done one thing to prevent it. We already got one here, and he's took up land and moved into a house, and not one man's raised a hand against him. You, Henry, you lost a boy in the war, and for all you know, it was John Guest that shot him. Yeah, he sure could have. Yeah. Hey, what do you say to that, sir? Yeah. Davy. For all you know, your own pa made a cripple out of you. Charlie, I'm going to ask you just one question. Go ahead and ask. Now, you've been making a lot of wild claims concerning just who shot who, so I'm going to ask you man to man. When you were out there fighting, did you ever stop to ask somebody's name before you pulled the trigger? You ain't taking sides again us, are you, Cincinnati? Well, you can be real certain I ain't taking your side. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because Boone's been talking to you. What's wrong with that? I can answer that, too. Boone's gone and double-crossed us all. He showed guest land, and now he's helped me fix up his house. Now, there you go. Boone being out there makes a difference, though, don't it? What difference? Well, he swings a lot of weight in these parts. Well, will you listen to that? Blood will out. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? I am no Tory, you all know that! What he really means is... He's scared you might get nerve enough to stand up for your own. And, Davey, if you ain't got the nerve I have, because I am going to put a stop to this right now. You ain't going nowhere, now, old man. Get out of my way before I throw you out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Any more 
yellow bellies around here? All right, come on then. Any man that hangs back's a Tory. You with us, Davy? Let's go. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. No welcome home, I'll promise you. <laughs> Where's Hal? You think I'd bring him out here? To face your friends? We'll get him out before we're done with you, and we'll learn him about Tories. Yeah. yeah. Ain't you glad to see your own colors? <laughs> yeah, take a look. Yeah, yeah, take a look. They aren't oh. mine. Put it back. Make him stomp on it. Let's make him throw it down on the ground and stomp on it. Ah, uh, let him take it along with him. That's fair enough. You can take your rag along with you. I'm not going anyplace. You're going back to Canada. Thought a way to talk up, Davy boy. Sorry, Dave. I'm staying here. Paul, get out right now. This is no place for you. Go back to Canada while you still have a chance. This is our country, Dave. You were born here. So was your brother. Your mother's buried here. And it's here I'll die. He said it himself. Sam, give me the rope. Uh, no, Charlie, we don't want no part of that. Yeah. Which side you on? Your ticket will make a man of you. Well, at least let him decide. He did choose. You all heard him. Say you ain't got no Tory blood? Here, I'll give you the honor. Or are you a traitor after all? Go! Hey! Hey! Get out! Run! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Charlie, there ain't no need for that. Let him go back to Canada.
take it. One end or the other. Tori's friends are Tories in our eyes, and we've got rope enough for all of you. I, I can't. that rope or I'll drop you and it won't make much difference to me either way. You can only get one of us, Boone. I'll let you figure out which one it'll be, Charlie. Do as he says. All right, move away from him. that if I were you, Charlie. Sam. Morgan. Tupper. But are you just going to stand there? They didn't quite commit a murder, Charlie. No thanks to you. Now, do you want to walk out of here, or do you want to crawl? Neighbors? Don't leave. I think this is the time and place for us to try and understand each other. Stevens, Joe McAdams, Simon. Hardly a man here I haven't fought beside. You betrayed the revolution. Not as much as you, Morgan. The revolution was fought to prove man's right to his own conscience, whether you or me or anyone else agrees or not. Now, you men. You dared fight the red coats and stand up to George III, and yet you knuckled under to Charlie Pete because you were afraid that Charlie would think you were unpatriotic. Sorry, John. It was your speech, not mine. You said it better than I ever could. I only hope it's, it's all over. Good night, John. Morgan. Now that the rest of you have made your peace, why don't you go on home and get some rest? Davy. Son. Hey, we're a family again, huh? <laughs> Israel, I think we better start preparing for that housewarming. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> right.